Welcome to another audio reading session of Listen In, presented by Tenkar Angler and voiced by Dave Rossett. We are excited to have you with us again. A Different Drift, an essay by David West Beal. The boulders are green and moss-covered and span the rushing river like a giant's stepping stones, just a bit too widely spaced to travel across without a small leap of faith. Jumping from one to another, the boulders give me the chance to work my way to the middle of the channel and cover a different drift. The water is deep and fast, but it's a managed risk. I'm quite safe here. Safe from the pressures of design deadlines, sales targets, and tricky clients. Safe from the everyday worries that might elsewhere crowd in, demanding my attention. Here, the healing music of the stream just washes them all away. It washes my kabari away, too, plucking the fly out from the slack water and flinging it downstream like an unwanted plaything. But I resist the temptation of tying on a weighted fly. Instead, I'm looking for a down-welling current to pull my kabari deep and keep it drifting there. A solid tap on the line and a head shake precedes an ejected hook, but now I know I'm on a good line. Another drift, and this time I'm rewarded by the prettiest of wild brown trout. It's still amazing to me to search a place like this and find such jewels. Another day and another stream. Where yesterday's water was deep and moody and shaded, today's stream is light and bright and shallow and very small. Everything is scaled right down here. The stream, the fish, and hence the tackle. And you have to make yourself small too to stand a chance. It's not a water for waders. It's a water for creeping along the shoreline, casting upstream to micro pockets and pools. I spend a long time keeping low and sneaking into position but I'm rewarded on my first cast with an emphatic take as soon as the Kabari touches down. A virtuoso performance of trout ballet follows as a fish goes airborne not once, but four times. Unlike the deeper river yesterday, here there are no depths to run to, so these fish love to leap. Often it's a head shake and game over as the hook comes free, but I'm content enough with this long-range catch and release. Today, though, I'm blessed and my fish comes to hand. There's a steeliness to these little trout, and I wonder if it's because the surging Atlantic Ocean is just 600 yards downstream. Comparing my photos, I see how finely the trout can change color to blend with their environment. The peat-stained water and butterscotch trout of yesterday are replaced by little metallic rockets that are invisible in this riffle and foam. Two streams, two very different populations of wild trout, and I'm hoping today on my third river to compare and contrast the fish here too. But try as I might on what is usually the easier river of the three, there is not so much as a rise or even a spook fish to betray the presence of a trout population. Today a visitor could be excused for thinking that this stream holds no fish at all. From earlier visits and catch reports, I know better, but it's still a mystery to me where the fish go sometimes. The mood of this place is slightly unnerving, and the absence of fish seems to underline my feeling of not being entirely welcome here. My favorite streams energize and uplift me. This stream seems today to drain away my resolve so that I fish, I begin to feel a homesick longing to be elsewhere. There's a break in the rain, and clouds briefly the sun shines through, painting different hues around. My spirits lift, and I push on, working back downstream now, always searching for trout. As I reach the ancient stone bridge where I first entered the river, at last I see some trout skidding around the edge of the flow. The sun seems to have lifted their spirits, too. David Westbeal lives in England, UK, where he fishes for anything that swims with his fly rod. 
You can follow his adventures at tenkaratales.blogspot.com. Thank you for taking the time with Tenkara Angler. We hope you've enjoyed this article. If you have a story to tell, a photo to share, or a fly recipe that's too good to keep secret, we would love to feature your content. Find your way over to tenkaraangler.com to learn how to submit your contribution for publication.